All aboard! And welcome to this edition of Shaky Hands Shed, where I'll be taking this AHM switcher that's an eBay rescue and making it into a presentable model, shall we say. And here we are, here's the subject I'm starting with. Bart as an eBay non-runner and rough bodywork. Missing hand rail and chips and scratches, but with potential. And the first thing I did was take the base off, as you do, because I wanted to discover. I thought maybe it's the gear wheel, and I was right. This isn't the one. This is the replacement which is a Hornby part, I'll put the part number up on the screen so you know what you need and I got that and what I had to do I had to strip the wheel set to get the black gear wheel off it and I put that onto the AHM wheel set put it back together, put it back in and it's a beautifully meshing gear it, there's a possibility it were the same moulded part with model model railway stuff how it's entered, intertwined but that's telling you the part number you need if you want one if you have a stripped gear in one of these you want to get going yourself and here yeah, what I'm doing, I'll be putting the wheel back in. Oh no, I'll be oiling it. I tell a lie, I'll be oiling it. Steady on now, Paul, you're not on what I lie to you, no. And as we go, just general cleaning and oiling and making sure it's okay to take the wheel. And there we go, there's your basic layout on it. In drops the wheel with the new gear on. Um, we're going to be putting a base on. Oh, there I'm just clipping in the contacts. They go onto the back of the wheels. So I'm putting the contacts onto the rear of the wheels. And then the base plate goes on and gets screwed down as I'm doing here, I put I got rid of the flat head screws and replaced them with M2 posi drive screws and at this point I'm taking off the bodywork <laughs> and it's simple one screw removal and whips off nice simple little old locomotive take the weights off and I oiled it just off screen there <coughs> and there we go working lovely again frackwoods and barwoods And here I'm washing the body in a little bit of washing up liquid in warm water. And I'm sewing down the broken parts. Ready for laying in some plastic card. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry about coughing with the cold walks. There I am, just another cut in it. 
I actually tried doing it sideways, but it weren't happening. So what I actually did, I broke it off with pliers and then trimmed down with a scalpel. Trimmed it down to size. Ready for inlaying just a little bit of a file as well. Ready for inlaying plastic card into it. So it repairs the steps. And here I actually bought a selection of sample pieces from a plastic card supplier off eBay. It was enough for the job. If I need any more, I know where they are. A um, little bit of advertising with the name on. If you wish to look to then look them up. If you need plastic card. And there I'm just judging how much I need. I'll be able to cut it down. And I'll be doing the same at the rear there. And there I've just put Tamiya glue on. It's not the extra thin, I used the thicker stuff for that. Did a nice job and lined the plastic card in. The plastic card was still a little bit off, bit off size wise. But it's not so you'd notice thickness wise. It goes in pretty good. I could have sanded it down better, but I can live with the results. It's a lot better than it was. And at this point, I've got some Atherm blue box. Local one rails. You could make your own. Simple enough thing to do. And I've super glued them in under the foot plate there. And there it is with some handrails on. They look a lot better than the original plastic as well. And at this point I'm using a creamy sort of grey colour. Just dirty looking colour really for <coughs> settled dust and dirt etc on top of it and down the sides and representing faded paintwork <coughs> I've turned me crank me paint um, not crank me airbrush right down for fine detail work And at this point, I wanted to do this first. But I'm actually using a Citadel colour here. All the others I've used are Vallejo. But I'm using a Citadel colour. And it's a uh, wash. It's old Seraphin Sepia. It's called. So it's like a sepia wash in effect. And here I'm using Vallejo. This is one I didn't mix up. This is Vallejo's track colour. And it's a good representation of the chocolatey brownie. Like chassis grime, etc. Break dust, rust. All the grime and stuff you get on chassis. It's a good representation of the background colour for that. And you can come up a little bit up the body with it and on the front buffer beam and etc. At this part I'm doing the grill, I want to tone down the white stripe on it. 
That's the one I'm doing, I'm spraying with black. It's a bit bright for a white stripe that's going off of the grill, really. So that's toned it down quite a bit. quite a lot now and I also used the black for the exhaust over the cab roof there we go it looks like there's oil and gunk on it now from the engine compartment And here, what I'm doing, I'm sealing all my work in so far with a matte varnish. Well, a matte sealer coat. Yeah, it seals the colour in nice. So you can go on to further work without scratching or damaging it because as you can imagine it's very light paint work very easy to rub off with your fingers and at this point now we've got all them colours on we start with weathering powders Now we've uh, brushed, we brushed some weathering powders on, selected areas where you want rusty areas and the like, like on the leaf springs there, where you'd have got reddish rust from them um, continually rubbing together and the rust dust from in between them coming out, put a bit of the yellowy rust in with it as well. normally go for a less is more idea and this although it looks overdone it gets sealed in again with the spray and matte varnish and when you spray it on it loses a lot of its colour so you can torn up and have it brighter than you think and then the matte varnish will lose a lot of the colour out of it and it looks a lot better. Like at this point I thought, oh god, please tone down this colour. Because I weren't happy with it, I went over it with some darker stuff and you can see there on the exhaust, I've used my technique of using different weathering powders and different coloured weathering powders. Put a little bit of clay varnish on your paintbrush and dab it on with the weathering powder and it gives a crispy rust effect. And here I'm sealing in again with matte varnish. Once it'll dry, it good disappears, then it dries again and it shows up again. And looks good, basically. What I'm doing here, I'm putting some black wash on the grills, etc., to turn the white stripe down, and I'm also using it. For oil stains down the doors and onto the sole plate, etc. Down off the sole plate in some areas. I'm unsure whether the American ones do it in these areas, but if they're anything like the British glass or weight shunters, they'll have oil with plenty. 
Anyway, here's a little technique, a little bit of your rust colour and put it in with your clay varnish and just tease it. Tease it down. You can get it very, very thin for just giving a rust stain appearance. Good for doing all the lettering, etc. <laughs> And there uh, we are, that bit's done. And next bit, we'll be showing it on me. I built a photographic corner area. Where I it shows off the train on the layout. And there we go. It's on, I forget what I called it now. But it's on the photographic corner I built when I were doing model railways last time. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe. Even better, press the bell icon for getting notifications. And absolutely superb would be to give a thumbs up. And anyway, as it heads off, into the tunnel, all I have to say is, tatty pie everyone, tatty pie.